wife, even though he died. Every one of his wives has committed himself to me in faith shall not die forever. As for me, I know that my Redeemer lives, and that at the last of his time, stand upon the earth. After my awakening, he will raise me up, and in my body I shall see God. I myself shall see my eyes behold him, who is my friend and not a stranger. For none of us has life in himself. And none becomes his own master after when he dies. For if we have life, we are alive in the Lord. And if we die, we die in the Lord. So that whether we live or die, we are the Lord's possession. Happy from now on are those who die in the Lord. So it is, says the Spirit, will they rest from their land. As acolytes process in, I want to say how grateful I am that you're here to support this family and be in this house of prayer. I also want to tell you why we're here. We're here to commit David to the resurrection. That's our main work. What did Jesus say? Everyone who comes to me, I will never lose. Everyone the Father gives to me, I will never cast out. We're also here to come from this good and gracious family. Um, Jesus also said, All of you who are weary and heavy laden, come to me and I will give you rest. And finally, finally we're here to speak a word of hope to all of you. To show that the hope of the Lord Jesus Christ is greater than any darkness that may eclipse us. What did Jesus say? In this life, in this life, we'll have troubles. But behold, I have overcome the world. Family has chosen all the hymns and all the readings today. I ask you to open your hymnal to hymn 473. Let us sing verses 1, 2, and 4. 1, 2, and 4. <laughs>
O God, who by the glorious resurrection of your Son, Jesus Christ, destroyed death and brought life and mortality to life, grant that your servant, David Bartlett Molak, being raised with him, may know the strength of his presence and rejoice in his eternal glory, who with you and the Holy Spirit lives and reigns, one God, forever and ever. Amen. Most merciful God, whose wisdom is beyond our understanding, deal graciously with the Molak family in their grief, surround them with your love that they may not be overwhelmed by their loss, and have confidence in your goodness and strength to me today to come through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. You may be seated for the reading of Holy Scripture.
A reading from the Revelation to St. John. And I saw the holy city, the new Jerusalem, coming down out of heaven from God, prepared as a bride adorned for her husband. And I heard a loud voice from the throne saying, See, the home of God is among mortals. He will dwell with them. They will be his people, and God himself will be with them. He will wipe every tear from their eyes. Death will be no more. Mourning and crying and pain will be no more, for the first things have passed away. And the one who was seated on the throne said, See, I am making all things new. Also he said, Write this, for these words are trustworthy and true. Then he said to me, It is done. I am the Alpha and the Omega, the beginning and the end. To the thirsty I will give water as a gift from the spring of the water of life. Those who conquer will inherit these things, and I will be their God, and they will be my children. The word of the Lord. Please stand for the gospel of him. In 178, 178, verses 1 through 4.
just the best thing I can tell you about David in just a month that he was there, he was loved by everybody. And that's just who he is. David's a young man who always chose people above paper. He wasn't caught up in being in a hurry and doing things the way everyone wanted it. He was about the person that was right next to him. Um, his love language was always the language of affirmation. He affirmed everybody that was around him. He made sure everybody was loved. And if somebody lacked it, he was the one who would fill it. So in just that one month that we had him in our team and in our program, and he wore that uniform, he brought honor to so many of us. What I want to share with you today are hopefully some words of hope to bless you and encourage you. We'll never say it here, but we're all broken and hurt. Moments like this that are so difficult for us, we have to go back to what's the basic fundamental truth that is never changing. We need something at this moment that is bigger and greater than the moment. The movement of Jesus is that. You heard all the wonderful scriptures. Jesus comes to set captives free. Jesus comes so the blind can see. Jesus comes so that, that the oppressed can be released. Jesus came to bring good news to the poor. And in many ways, a lot of us today are held captive and poor and just in, in poverty by just this moment. This moment that on, from the outside in looks tragic. But I'm going to challenge you today to look at this from the eyes of God. I know that's hard for us to do. To do that, you have to know three things. First of all, you have to know who you are. Regardless of your circumstances, if you don't know who you are, you're going to let circumstances judge you and define you. You will let a performance dictate to you who you are. And you'll go up and down and fly forwards and backwards to the left and to the right and never really know who you are. You think who you are is, is what you do. You think who you are is, is what you say and what you have. Peter didn't know who he was for a while. At the very beginning when Jesus did the miraculous, the miraculous catch, Peter looked at Jesus and fell on his knees and said, Get away from me, O Lord. I'm a sinner. Peter never felt he was dignified and qualified to be in front of the Christ. Peter writes after he meets Christ and after he's trained by Jesus for three years. And the monumental moment in Peter's life when he sees the resurrected Jesus. He writes in 1 Peter chapter 2 verse 9 who he, who he is. He writes to, to David and to us in this tragic moment, and at the same time, this wonderful, glorious moment, who we are in Christ. He says, for we're a holy nation. We're a royal priesthood. We're God's chosen. You know, David, God didn't need David to be God. My favorite thing is God didn't want to be God without David. That goes for every one of us. God could have been God without, without creating order. In the midst of darkness, he did not have to create the light. He would have been God either way. But he chose to create order and bring life and bring us in the fold and give us purpose and take us from being sinners as, as Peter writes and says when he falls on his knees to when he writes in 1 Peter that now he is, he is a priesthood through Christ. The other thing that Peter writes is he basically says what we're to do and we need to know who we are in this moment and we need to know what we're to do in this moment. We're to show the world the goodness of God. Even in dark moments and difficult times, we must show the world how good God is and I'll reveal to you what God has done this moment in just a second. The third thing that Peter writes in 1 Peter 2, 9, he says this, and I love this, why? You've got to know who you are, you've got to know what to do, you've got to know why we do it. Why do we show the world the goodness of God? Peter writes, because he called us out of the darkness into his wonderful light. There is light in the midst of darkness. And there's a wonderful, beautiful, beautiful, radiant light that David is at right now. He's been called out of the darkness into a wonderful 
life. The hardest thing for us to do is we get so caught up looking at the visible. And I'm here to tell you that the invisible is more powerful than the visible. The things that are unseen are eternal and the things that we see are temporary. I'm here to tell you what C.S. Lewis said is that we are not bodies that have souls. We're souls that have bodies. We're souls that, that this is not who he is. This, is. this is the body that is left. David lives because Jesus Christ gives us resurrection. And the greatest news of all is that there is life after death in Jesus Christ. That is the crux of our faith, and that is what makes us get up every morning. And that's why we rise and glorify and give praise to our King. The Bible talks about death in three ways. First of all, it says that death means, Paul writes, to those who are asleep. In the Greek, it means to be asleep. Cemetery is a form, is a Greek term that means to be asleep. My little boy, when he was four years old, he had a grand uncle that passed away. And, and he came up to me at four and he said, Dad, what, what happened to Uncle, uh, Uncle Peppy? I, I go, what's going on? I don't understand. Couldn't understand that. I said, son, he's asleep. One day he'll rise and he'll wake up in a little better place. And he said, Dad, what does that mean? I'll put it to you in a very simple way, son. Tonight you're going to go to bed. And as you go to bed, you're going to sleep in your room, in one room, in one little dark place. And without you even knowing it, in the middle of the night, I am going to come in in my loving arms. And I'm going to pick you up. And I'm going to put you in bed with Mom and I. You'll be in a bigger bed, in a better place with people who love you. He said, Dad, I'm going to sleep. I'm going to stay up all night. <laughs> He wait to see that. I said, you're not even going to notice it. You'll go to sleep and you won't, even, you won't even understand it. Sure enough, in the middle of the night, and I'm looking in, and he's bobbing and he's been trying to stay away. <laughs> he goes to bed. And in my loving arms, as a father, I take the son I love. And I place him in a better place with his mom. When he woke up, he said, it happened. How did it happen? I said, son, that is what happened. And I'm here to tell you, that's what happened today. Look past the visible. See the invisible, beautiful hands of Christ. Take your son, who is his son, to be a better place. The Bible also describes death as a departure. I shared this with Chris. If David were to tell all of us, hey, uh, it's, I'm, I'm, I'm moving. I'm moving. I'm, I'm going to move to China. I'm going to go be a missionary. And um, I, won't, I won't see you anymore. But I'll, I'll be in a distant land. But I'll still be alive. When he leaves the country and he crosses the waters and he goes, to another land, is that what death, death is to those of us that are in Christ? We leave this land to go to a distant land, all because of the resurrection of Jesus Christ. Paul said, it is time for my departure. That's what it is. It's just a departure. It doesn't mean he no longer exists. He exists. He's in a different country. He's in a divine land. That's what the resurrection does. The final way that the Bible describes death, it describes it as a shadow. Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil. See, to Christianity under Christ and the resurrection of Jesus, what death is, is to us, death is not a period. It's just a comma. It's just the first page. It's just the first word in the sentence. There's so much more behind it. When I was a child, I was afraid of shadows. I was scared of them. They could touch me, they could hurt me. And what death does to those of us that have faith Christ is death touched David. But it could never hurt him. It could never harm him. It had no power over him. I'll close with this. It's one of my favorite passages in the Bible. This is a passage that helps me when I hit hard times, and I pray it helps you. For God who said, let there be light in the darkness has made his light shine in our hearts. That's the beauty of Christ. 
His light shines in us. He goes further and says, We have a light shining in our hearts, but we ourselves are like fragile clay jars containing this great treasure. Today we're fragile. Today we're hurt. Today we're oppressed. We're impoverished. Today we're held captive in some way. Paul goes further and says this, We're oppressed on every side by troubles. But we're not crushed. We're pressed today. Your, your mind doesn't comprehend it. Your heart is broken. You have no will. If that's you today, in the middle of all that, know that there's a light shining inside of you. It's the indwelling of Jesus Christ. It will not. You might be perplexed. But that light will never be crushed. We're perplexed, but we're not driven to despair. We're hunted down, but we're never abandoned by God. We're knocked down. We're never destroyed. This is our greatest take of all. This is what he finishes with. This is why we never give up. Can you hold on to that just for a second? Don't give up. Don't ever give up. Because greater is he who is in you than he that is in the world. Know who you are. Know what you're to do. And know why you're to do it. We never give up though our bodies are dying daily. Our spirits are being renewed every day by that light. For our present troubles are small and they won't last very long. Yet, yet, yet they produce for us a glory that outweighs them all. So we don't look at the troubles we see now. Rather, we fix our gaze on the things that we cannot see. For the things we see now will soon be gone. The things that are unseen last forever. You read an editorial once of this father, parent, who lost their child. And he writes on Easter Sunday, Never before has this day been the greatest. I've never understood this day until now. Because I believe in the doctrine of resurrection. Not in the doctrine of reincarnation where I come back to the same world over and over and over and over again until I get it right. I believe in the doctrine of resurrection. That Christ came and he bled for me. And he gave me new life. He bled for me. He died for me. Rose for me, he prepares a place for me, and he comes back for me. And he says, and I know that the dead live, and I will see my son again. He said, I mourn and I cry. We mourn and we cry. But don't forget who you are. Don't forget what Jesus did for David, what he's done for us. That the King of Kings be praised in the middle of our pain. The assurance of eternal life given to us in Jesus Christ, let us stand and offer the apostle. I believe in God, Father Almighty, Creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ. He was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate and was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven and he seated at the right hand of the Father. He will not again to the of the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, 
want to celebrate the uh, life of my son David. We really appreciate it. Uh, Patrick Gaten and Christ Church for letting us use this wonderful facility. Uh, thank you to uh, Coach Val for, for, uh, for, for uh, just being awesome. Uh, my son David was also awesome. He modeled true compassion. He went on ministry, ministry trips to uh, Mexico while he was here at this church. He uh, worked at the Good Samaritan Center on Halloween, passing out candy, painting faces. He served food and habitat for humanity, baked dozens of cookies, and did pictures for the Cairo prison ministry. His Eagle Scout project uh, was to build an outdoor facility at, uh, at the Youth for Christ uh, uh, Youth facility on the uh, near west side. He, uh, he loved to write letters of encouragement to, uh, to uh, an orphan in Uganda, Stephen Lafir, who we supported for, for many years and continued to support. David would write him, and uh, Stephen would write him back, and they, they would call each other brothers. And, and, uh, he, just, he just loved to, to lift other people up. Uh, we went with the problems in Haiti. Picked up. He, uh, he, he had to have a Haiti baby. So he went on and on and on about a Haiti baby. But that's just the way he was. And over the past several days, we've heard other stories about things that David's done for others that, uh, that you know, we don't know about. Um, was a girl in class and was putting up makeup that he had to do with it. Why, why are you doing this? That you, you get, that you don't need that. You can live without that. And it really built her up. That one from a boy that was on a field trip with David in sixth grade, and they won a basketball game. They that ball to the floor. And the boy has it still today. Um, his, his final legacy we didn't know about was. October, he got his driver's license, and, and there he, he signed uh, uh, as, a, as a donor. And so we found that out Monday. And so his, his uh, tissue and, and whatever could be used, and it can be used to help others. And that's the way David was. He truly cared about others and actually acted on like that to me is awesome. David was my main uh, hunting companion. Some of our favorite times were for the theories. Um, he was like a marksman, and he never, never missed it the year. Even the first time that he ever shot one, I, I, uh, I, I doubted that he hit it. It looked like it looked like he missed me, and so I didn't spend much time looking for it. But, you know, Kept on and on. We left. He insisted that he got, so we had to go back. And of course, there was us get a perfect hit on that deer. And he never let me forget about that. Several hundred trips. Now, when we hunted hogs, it was, it was a different story. When, when the hogs came out, um, David. Uh, David's leg was just start shaking, and he was, uh, the whole body was shaking. And so the, the hog were usually pretty safe. <laughs> Out there. We call that hog fever. Hog fever. Uh, but my favorite hunting time with, uh, with David uh, was, was down at the leaves. And, and, uh, it really had nothing to do about hunting. Was, uh, out, of, out of the blue, he uh, was he, I believe he's in third grade. He, uh, he asked me um, uh, how he could have Jesus in his heart by accepting Christ as his personal Savior. And this is, uh, you know, he was uh, wasn't expecting this, but something that, 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 that every Christian father would want to hear from God. Um, 
But we talked a bit, we prayed, and from that point, David had a personal relationship with Christ and, and hope for eternal life. And memory of this is the simple act, it's the powerful, conscious act that he had, is this what, what is sustaining us right now. Um, going forward, our, our goal is not uh, judgment or revenge or I think that's the job of others. I know judgment belongs to the Lord, but the real healing for me and for the community will only come through, through uh, forgiveness. And so I ask uh, you for your prayers, and that's what can only happen with, with, uh, with intervention from the Lord. And I ask you to continue to pray for us so that we can, we can achieve that. Um, when you came in today, you should have been given a copy of a, of a uh, posting that uh, my sons put together. Um, some of it that uh, I'm also incredibly proud, proud of. And they talk about honoring David in, in, in a big way. Uh, to me, that means a simple goal of not to let it Bullying will lead to the loss of one more child. To remember that words can hurt just as badly as physical violence. As uh, parents, we need to parent a little better and know whether or not our kids are misusing technology. We need to do a better job of following God's commandment to love one another. And it doesn't mean just friends, it means those that are, that are on the periphery to make them. Uh, using peer pressure in a positive way, I think, can also help. Peer pressure is real, it's a powerful thing. It can lead good individuals to do things that they ordinarily wouldn't do, including piling on when someone's being attacked or tormented, as opposed to standing up for someone. It could also do the opposite and serve a good purpose. We need to think differently about what we look for in our role model or what we think is true. Looking out for your friends is cool. Looking out for others that are not necessarily your friends is even cooler. To me, having true compassion for others and treating them with kindness is cool. I've been uh, fortunate in my life to meet uh, to meet uh, famous military heroes of World War II, Korea, Vietnam, the, the act activities in, in Iraq, Afghanistan, astronauts, aviators, politicians, Hall of Fame NBA players, NFL players, and all of these guys are heroes, and they're very very cool. But I can tell you that none of them held the light to my son, David Molak, who's the coolest guy that I have ever met, or will ever meet, except on the day when I meet my creator. Thanks, pretty nice view of you. You guys, you guys the dresses have got a good. Uh, me and Cliff decided to switch places. I mean, most, I could talk Cliff enough anyway that uh, I figured most of y'all wouldn't notice anyway. <sighs> Obviously, today is a pretty tragic day. My dear brother David lost his life far too soon with so much left to accomplish. And it's sad he's not here with us. However, we shouldn't focus on the grief, but instead celebrate his life and let his loving and tender spirit move through all of us in this really dark time. Even from the beginning, there was no fence too high for David to climb. Literally. Um, on multiple occasions, this three-year-old Houdini wheeled his wagon over to our eight-foot iron, steel iron fence surrounding our backyard and hurtled over just to take a stroll our along the park. David was so determined to never be left out of the harmless shenanigans my older brother and I got into, regardless of our substantial age difference. I remember the, <laughs> I remember the two of us hiking in Estes Park a couple years ago, 
I was trying so hard to leave David from dust, just just to hold it over his head. But, I mean, there was just no way in hell he was about to let that happen. I just I remember looking at him and and he uh and he was trying so hard not to make it look like he was exhausted. And I was like, dang, let's not, at least I'm not the only one. <laughs> so in my uncoordinated clumsiness, I ended up tripping down the mountain and having a not so fun encounter with the cactus in a less than desirable part of my body. <laughs> I just remember him laughing hysterically as he had his arm around me, assisting in my uncomfortable waddle away from the embarrassing agony. Whether it was David kicking my ass and calling me called sick at age six, or more recently eliminating my chance of any productivity by teaching how to play Clash of Lands like a professional, David really was the happiest when he was with his brothers. I'll never forget the almost tangible light in his eyes sitting on the couch this past Christmas Eve when I finally gave in and downloaded this painfully addicting application. Cliff and I were, uh, we feel like we were fortunate enough to let David experience some of the finer things in life. We were able to give him a, his first beer at Dove Hunt last fall. Uh, although I don't think he had enough time to truly accustom to the, uh, to the taste of cold Bud Light because he quickly mixed it with Dr. Pepper when no one was looking. <laughs> Can't make that shit up, folks. <laughs> I know that uh, I know the road ahead will be very difficult for my family with that David, but I find great solace and inner peace knowing that he is free from the darkness that plagued his beautiful life. And I just hope that in his memory, people will stop seeking self fulfillment from dimming the light of others, because eventually some lights just don't turn back on.
David died a long time ago, but his death doesn't have to be in vain. Just a few days following his death, the movement has started to awaken our community and communities around the nation to the dangers of bullying and the necessity to teach our youth the importance of character. David's legacy is already starting to spread. If you take anything away from my message, I want it to be that every life is to be cherished. And in order to ensure every life is cherished, we need to begin holding ourselves accountable for teaching our youth the importance of character and instilling into them a sense of morality, a morality seemingly lost upon this new generation of youth. We need to do this now. Now is the time for change. Let's do it for David. Let's do it for my baby brother.
the day who died and said, we want to walk down the aisle uh, in testimony of our love of the Lord. And all these in Christ Church uh, young adults, and thank you. All of you. They all came to us, not us to them. So I know I'm rambling, but uh, just so much gratitude in my heart. Finally, uh, let me say that we're going to feed you today, thanks to this extended family. We have a wonderful, wonderful kind of pickup luncheon. It's going to be served several places, a couple of places out, out, out in on our campus. The main place of serving will be the parish hall. We will lead the family at the last hymn around the parish hall where they can reach you. Um, and then uh, we also will be serving in the carriage house, which has been newly restored for our youth and for our, our feeding program for the poor. So either one of those places you'll have something to eat before you go back to school or go back to work. So let us now uh, say our prayers uh, for ourselves and for those we love. I invite the congregation to meet. For our brother David, let us pray for our Lord Jesus Christ who said, I am resurrection and I am life. Lord, you console Martha and Mary in their distress. Draw near to us who mourn for David, and dry the tears of those who weep. Hear us, Lord. You wept at the grave of Lazarus, your friend. Comfort us in our sorrow. Hear us, Lord. You raise the dead to life. Give to our brother eternal life. Hear us, Lord. You promised paradise to the thief who repented. Bring our brother to the joys of heaven. Lord. Our brother was washed in baptism and anointed with the Holy Spirit. Give him fellowship with all your saints. Lord. He was nourished with your body and blood. Grant him a place at the table in your heavenly kingdom. Lord. Comfort us in our sorrows at the death of our brother David. Let our faith be our consolation and eternal life our hope. Father of all, we pray to you for David and for all those whom we love that we see no longer. Grant to them eternal rest. Let the light of heaven shine upon them. May his soul and the souls of all the departed, through the mercy of God, rest in peace. Amen. And let us offer the prayer that our Lord Jesus gave us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done. Christ, your servants, with your saints. Your sorrow and pain are no more, and I design a life everlasting. You only are immortal. The creator and maker of mankind, and we are immortal. Formed of the earth, and to earth shall we return. For so did you ordain when you created me, saying, You are dust, and to dust you shall return. All of us go down to the dust, Yet even at the grave we make our song. Alleluia, alleluia, alleluia.
the lamb of your own flock, the sinner of your own redeeming. Receive him into the arms of your mercy, with the blessed rest of everlasting peace, and with the glorious company of the saints of life. Amen. I've got the intro. Now may the peace of God, the pass of all understanding, keep your hearts and minds in the knowledge and love of God, and His Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be with you, your households, and with all those you love today and always. Amen. Amen.